Welcome back into the original Gangsters Podcast, another quick hitter episode. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, a recent mob jewel heist crew bust uh, in Manhattan. Uh, multiple crime families were involved, but the, the main guy at the uh, forefront of this thing is Frankie DiPietro, um, Frankie the Fish, a.k.a. Skip or Skippy. And, you know, we're going to go over the, you know, the bullet points on what exactly happened uh, in this bus last week uh, out of New York City. But I, I want to also give a quick deep dive. That might be a oxymoron, a quick deep dive on uh, – on, on Di Pietro's mob lineage. And we've learned some of this from uh, the reporting of, of sit down news, John Panisi, friend of the show, uh, who was able to shed some light on, on Di Pietro's background. Um, I put out something about uh, a murder that, that Frankie Di Pietro was, was convicted of about 20 years ago and uh, came out of prison uh, in, in the 2010s. And he made the move from the Lucchese's to the Genovese. And that's where he is right now. He's a made man in the Genovese crime family. And this was reported by Jerry Capace last week in Gangland News. And uh, based on what Panisi's saying, it looks like Frankie Di, Di Pietro was um, proposed and uh, sponsored by his brother. Rocco Di Pietro, Rocky Di Pietro, who, according to Panisi, is a capo regime in the Genovese right now. And the Di Pietro brothers have a really interesting backstory. Uh, their, their, their father was Carlo Di Pietro, who went by the nickname Kali, and, uh, or Charlie, or Cosmo, but a lot of people called him Kali. And he was a crew boss. I'm not positive he was a if it were a full-fledged skipper or just a high-ranking soldier who had a crew underneath him, but uh, a pretty major player in the, in the Genovese back in the, in the 70s. Um, he was murdered back in 1981, disappeared after a, a, a seemingly a dispute with, with a guy named Joe Glitz, uh, Joe Galiza, who, according to uh, some informants, was actually inducted into the Genovese by murdering Kali uh, uh, Di Pietro. Uh, they were all partners in a, in a flea market, a group of flea markets, uh, along with John Gotti at that point, a young uh, capo regime in the Gambino crime family. And the, the elder Di Pietro was also, uh, according to some of these FBI informants, the point man for the Genovese crime family in that what became a very infamous uh, bootleg gasoline scam, a daisy chain scam that was uh, pioneered by Russians and, and the Colombo's uh, mafia prince, Mike, Fran Mike Francis, another friend of the show. And uh, Kali Di Pietro uh, disappeared in 1981. And it looks like. Uh, Frank D. Pietro, at least, gravitated away from the Genovese and uh, linked up with a Lucchese crew out of Staten Island uh, that was called the Port Richmond crew, skippered by a guy named uh, Fat Nicky Di Costanzo. And uh, they perpetrated a murder. Uh, or I should say Frankie Di Pietro at that point was known as Skip or Skippy, uh, murdered a guy named uh, Booty Van Name, uh, George Van Name, they called him Booty, uh, who, who had testified uh, in front of, I believe, just grand juries at that point, but was, was working with the DEA uh, to build uh, narcotics cases against the Lucchese crew that was operating out of Staten Island. and. Uh, Di Pietro was 
very close to a, a Staten Island Lucchese soldier uh, named Rocco Papa Pietro, who went by Rocky Paps. And uh, that seemed to be the guy that brought him into the Lucchese realm. And him and a guy named, I know there's a lot of nicknames, I apologize, a lot of, a lot of just names in general uh, to, to consume here. But uh, when, when the Lucchese crew discovered that uh, Booty was cooperating, a guy named Tony Bones, Anthony Lofredo, lured him to uh, a wooded area in Staten Island where Frankie D. Pietro uh, shot him to death. And he had to go to prison uh, for about eight, somewhere between uh, 16 and 18 years. Frankie Di Pietro uh, came out of prison in uh, around 2016 and has now left the Lucchese, got released from the Lucchese crime family and, and came underneath his brother, uh, Rocco. Uh, who's an alleged copo right now, according to, to John Panisi and Sit Down News, and, and got his butt in, in, a, in a 2018, late 19, late 2017, early 2018 ceremony. Um, and now let's get, I might have buried the lead, but I think that all the stuff with the jewelry heist has been well chronicled. So I wanted to kind of lead with uh, what maybe people didn't know about uh, Frankie Di Pietro, Frankie the Fish. Now he was Skippy. Now he's Frankie the Fish. So uh, Frankie Di Pietro and uh, four or five other guys were indicted last week for a pair of high-end jewelry robberies, arm robberies uh, in Manhattan that took place uh, earlier, back in the winter, uh, January, February ish, and then back uh, just last month in May. Uh, and it looks like they're, you know, just based on the indictment, it looks like these guys are dead to rights. Uh, there's there's a lot of evidence that uh, the prosecutors have, have laid out for us already. And, you know, this is a serious guy. Uh, his background, his genealogy, uh, he's someone that might have not been on the radar before, but you know now he's uh, he's he's starring in his own um, you know Ridley Scott movie uh, as as a as a daring uh, jewel robber guy, sixty six years old, and, and he's he's pulling uh, stick up jobs in, in Manhattan. So uh, first one happened in. Uh, Midtown uh, at, a, at a pretty exclusive elite jewelry store I, uh, that was in a building. The crew that Frankie D.A. put Frankie D. Pietro was uh, heading were all dressed as construction workers. And uh, they just kind of walked into this high end jewelry store that you had to be buzzed in, uh, uh, buzzed in to get into. But because they were dressed as uh, construction workers, and there had been a construction crew that I'm from reading that looks like the construction crew went to do something else, maybe take a break, uh, grab some lunch. And because of the casing they had done, DPHO's crew knew to just kind of slide in and make the people at the, at the jewelry um, place think that they were the guys that had already been there. They got in there and they pulled weapons. Uh, and, and between this and then the, another one last month that took that, that went down in Chinatown, over $2 million worth of, of jewelry, diamonds have been stolen. The Chinatown one is what really you know, blew this thing wide, wide open in terms of you know, law enforcement being able to take these guys down was uh, that the, the, the getaway driver in, in the Chinatown heist um, crashed the getaway car uh, had to go on foot, uh, ends up like, you know, with the police, he's in custody. They take pictures of him. They don't have enough evidence to arrest him for anything. But through video surveillance tapes, you know, security footage from the from the local businesses, they were able to kind of tie together what really happened. And that was that was really the beginning of the end uh, for this 
uh, for this jewelry heist crew led by uh, Frankie the Fish, De Pietro. So it, it's it's uh, it's funny that it, it's not funny, but it, it's it's intriguing, I guess, from from a, a, a researcher's perspective, that uh, a guy like Frank De Pietro with that pedigree and his dad, I guess, was not just tied into the Columbos and the, the Daisy Chain bootleg scam, not just tied in to um, John Gotti and the Gambinos, but also had some pretty serious connections, family connections. And again, this is another um, feather in the cap for, for Frankie DiPietro in terms of his bloodline. Uh, his dad was locked up, linked up with, with that whole uh, Carmine, the Cigar Galante's Bonanno crew moving a lot of H uh, from Europe um, to, to the U.S. in, in the 60s and, and early 70s. And it, it appears um, that there was either an uncle or a cousin that they called Uncle Kali um, Di Pietro uh, was, a, was a Bonanno guy named Frank, uh, Frankie Mari who ended up getting killed in the Bonanno, uh, the Joe Banana, or the Joe Bonanno, Banana War um, uh, back in the, in the, in the set, late 60s, early 70s. But uh, so, you know, Frank DiPietro is a guy that probably should have been on the scene um, before he was 66. Uh, that murder, because he was, wasn't really a major player uh, back when that murder was committed, 30 some years ago, uh, it didn't make a ton of news. And, uh, but now he's, you know, he's coming into his own in terms of uh, at least notoriety publicly uh, from the masses and, and uh, in regards to what a big, tough, big, bad mob guy, big, bad mob guy this guy is, because it's pretty, <laughs> obviously you got to have uh a lot of balls and be capable to uh, pull the trigger, but uh, to just go in guns blazing into, I don't know, broad daylight into jewelry stores in Manhattan. Um, <laughs> you, get, you gotta, you gotta tip your hat a little bit to, to this guy. Uh, and we'll see where, it, where, it, where it lands him. He, he's most likely have to go to do, could have to go do some more prison time. Um, but he's only 66, and when you're 66 in, in the mob, uh, that's kind of right there at the, you know, in some cases, it's the midpoint. Uh, guys don't really reach their peak sometimes until their 70s, even early 80s. So uh, we should see with, with uh, Frankie the Fish. Just wanted to give you guys an update. But uh, another quick hitter here. Jimmy's going to be back. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a full full length episode that we're going to roll out this week that we did on Buffalo uh, and what's going on with uh, the Buffalo uh, La Cosa Nostra family and uh, the, the reputed boss's nephew is about to go on trial for uh, a drug, a big drug and prostitution case. And it came out just, just actually, we broke it for you first, um, both at the gangsterreport.com and OG pod that uh, a Supreme Court judge in New York was an unindicted co-conspirator in the case, John Mikulski, who committed suicide last year. Uh, just recently, uh, or I should say just today uh, on Sunday, hit the front page of the Buffalo News. So we, we dissect that and uh, we're gonna have some uh, really exciting New England content that we're gonna drop soon with uh, the top state police uh, OC, guy in in providence for for 30 years so we're going to talk about what's going on right now in providence big uh, state and and fbi investigation into the maddie googly and many crew so keep it here on the og pod uh youtube channel for benny behind the glass and for jimmy who will be back at the for the full length episode i'm scott bernstein og pod out <laughs>